Hello and welcome to our third tutorial in this series. Today's lesson will be the last one focusing on the interface and the viewports. Now though this is the last tutorial before we start making objects, we've still got a lot of important functions to cover. So don't ignore this lesson, it's very important. Now in the last tutorial we mainly focused on controlling the viewports by using the steering wheel, the view cube and the mouse. But in today's lesson we'll be exploring a little bit more of that by mainly looking at this section of the lower interface bar. All right, here we've got some tools uh, similar to the ones we use on our steering wheel, uh, the view cube and the mouse. Uh, but we've got a few more functions in here, which I'm gonna show you now. Now to start off, we've got a zoom tool. You know what that does. So we'll just zoom in and out of our scene and uh, one viewport at a time. But then we've got another button on the right side of that, which is the zoom all. This allows us to do exactly the same thing but on all the viewports uh, in one in one go. And then we've got the zoom extent button here. And uh, what this does, it allows us to view every object within a scene. And uh, so it pretty much zooms out for us. Or if we are too far, it zooms in and shows us everything we've got. So for example, um, I created a box in that corner. I'll just make another one for the purpose of this tutorial. We've got our two boxes out here. And then right here uh, on this on this viewport, I'm just looking at the teapot. And then maybe I'm just looking at the box on here, an empty space here. For example, I select this viewport and I click on zoom extent. That zooms everything close up. And even if I'm working inside and quite close on one object, as soon as I click on that, it shows me everything. And the button right next to that, zoom extent all, just applies the same thing all the viewports. So as soon as I click that, now pay attention on our on, on these three viewports. Bam. That zooms everything out and we can see them clearly. Now right below that we've got the zoom region. I could select that. Select the region I want to view up close. As soon as I let go, start zooming in. Now you can repeatedly do it until you get as close as possible as close as you want but you probably won't use this tool as much as you've got all the other zoom functions around now we've got the pan the pan view you know what this does allows us to pan our scene uh, again one viewport uh, at a time there and then we've got our rotate tool this allows us to to orbit around us our scene so mind you, you're not rotating the object, you're just rotating the camera, uh, which helps you view your object. And down here, we've got the maximize viewport toggle. Now, whichever viewport you've got selected, as soon as you click that, it maximizes it. So that's the only viewport you can see. This is, this is usually a good way to work on intricate models, or if you, or if you want to work up close, on anything uh, using uh, using Studio Max. As soon as you click that button again, it takes you back to where you came from. Now, uh, you, you may have wondered, we've only got four viewports here and they, they're showing the top, the front and the left, but you can also change that by just right clicking uh, on, on the word itself, going to views, then you can select uh, a different a different angle that you like to view so in this instance maybe i'll choose back and that's now showing me the back the back side uh, of our scene you can change it according to to whatever you want but for now i'll return it to what we had before which i think was the front normally you won't need to change all these but uh, sometimes it's always it's always good to know and if for example you you want to change the size of your viewports you can just hover over the border and that will allow you to to change the size of them whichever border you want you can change the size and then if you want to affect uh, all the viewports in one go just place your mouse on on the center and that allows you to control it even more and if you happen to make a mistake whilst doing this it's very easy to rectify, just right click whilst hovering on that and then reset layout. 
and that pretty much takes you back to wherever um, you came from in terms of uh, the viewport's positioning and size. I'm, I'm now going to delete this teapot since we don't need it anymore. And then, uh, and these boxes here. So mind you, everything I'm doing on, on the other viewports, they're automatically affecting our perspective view here. On You've messed around the, with the viewports and you want to start a new project. So you can easily go to File, New. In this case, we don't want to save our changes. We say no. We knew all. Now, although we've started a new project, as you can see, our viewports haven't returned uh, to the original position. Now, the best way to, to go around this is to go to File, Reset. It, it will ask you, do you really want to reset? Just click Yes, and bam, everything's back to normal as if you've just opened the program. It's best doing this uh, so you save yourself from confusion and then it helps you delete any other objects that were hiding around the corner somewhere. Whilst working on one project, you might want to take objects from uh, another project you created earlier and uh, bring them into whatever you're working on now. So to do that, if you went to File, Open, and that will open up a completely different file and you won't be able to, to see both projects in the same uh, scene, so to speak. Now, what I'll do is just quickly create another, maybe I'll create a box, and then I'm gonna try and import a teapot I started working on earlier. Now to do that, what you need to do is go to File, Merge. Now I'll use something I worked on earlier. As you can see, it's a .max file. That's the default, um, the default file type for 3D Studio Max. Now I'll select the teapot I created earlier and say open. And then select the actual object there. Say OK. And uh, there we've got a teapot we made earlier. And now we've literally got two projects in one. We can work on them, render them together. And that won't be a problem. Now let me just go back to file again. I'm going to merge that same teapot and I'll show you what to do when this error occurs say open select that again say okay now uh, what's happening here is there's a duplicate name uh, issue so object t part one has the same name as an object in the scene so all you have to do uh, in that situation is just change the file name to whatever you want so in this case i'll just edit one at the end and say merge as soon as i do that we've got another t part in there and you don't have to keep importing but obviously i'm showing you this for the purpose of this tutorial. There we have it. And this was the last important thing I had to share with you before we moved, we moved into creating objects. Now all the last three tutorials, I understand were, were probably a little bit boring, but those functions are very important. Uh, if it is, it makes it really easy when you start creating objects on the next tutorial. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in today and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Bye for now.